The national debt officially reaching $33.9 trillion, according to the Treasury Department. It's being propelled by the increased government spending and also weaker than expected tax revenues coming in. We have to get the country back. We have to lower energy prices. We have to lower interest rates. Interest rates are through the roof. Energy has to come down. It all has to come down. And we have to start paying off debt. Seven trillion dollars on nonsense. We've got another question from a voter tonight. Get all of that money that was wasted, and frankly, the Senate should have never approved it. Get all that money that was wasted, and if they don't get rid of that, you'll have to default. Hey, welcome back to Currency Wizard, where we unravel the mysteries of the economy one episode at a time. Today's big question, will the United States ever be able to pay off its national debt? It's a topic that sparks debate among economists and policymakers alike. So let's dive in. And don't forget, if you like our content, hit subscribe and the notification bell to stay updated. As we start our exploration today, the US national debt has just crossed the mind-boggling mark of 30 trillion. That's a number hard to wrap our heads around, isn't it? It's equivalent to about $90,000 for every person living in the United States, or even more startling, about $240,000 per household. What does this astronomical number mean for our future, and what implications does it hold for the average American and the global economy? Let's unpack these questions. History tells us a lot about debt. After World War II, the US debt to GDP ratio was actually in a similar position as today. Yet the next few decades saw this ratio decrease significantly thanks to booming economic growth and moderate interest rates. Comparing past and present, the dynamics have certainly changed, but some principles remain the same. Let's talk about fiat currency. The dollar, like most modern currencies, isn't backed by physical commodities such as gold or silver anymore. Instead, its value comes from the trust that people have in the US government to back its value. This system gives the government the ability to print more money, but this isn't a simple solution. Increasing the money supply can lead to inflation if it outpaces economic growth, diluting the purchasing power of each dollar. Managing inflation while tackling high levels of debt is a delicate balance. It's not just about paying the debt down, it's about ensuring that inflation doesn't erode the real value of money. Rather than aiming to pay off the debt entirely, a more practical approach is debt sustainability, ensuring that the debt grows slower than the economy. Look at Japan. Their debt to GDP ratio is even higher than the US, yet they manage it with low interest rates and by keeping much of the debt domestically. It's not about eliminating the debt, but managing it smartly to foster long-term economic growth and stability. Paying off the national debt isn't as straightforward as just balancing a checkbook. It involves a complex balance of economic growth, inflation control, and fiscal policy. The goal isn't necessarily to eliminate the debt, but to manage it effectively, to ensure that it doesn't hinder future economic stability and growth. Thank you for joining us on this economic exploration. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and share it with your friends. See you next time.